Hi, I'm Brian from the Brian's Mobile One channel and in this video I've done a project where I put a winch on a Ram 2500. I wanted it to be cost effective, easy to put in, and just all around effective. I wanted it to work good. Approach angle was one concern with this project, but as you can see it was the same as before. So who really needs a winch anyway? Why in the world would you strap a big heavy thing that costs money to the front of your car? The answer may surprise you, it may be a lot more cost effective to have a winch than not to have one. I got on the phone with an off-road recovery expert and asked his opinion on it, on which winch I should have for the vehicle, and also what it would cost if I didn't have a winch and he had to come get me. Here's what he said. I'm justifying putting a winch on my truck and I'm wondering if it's cheaper to have a winch or to call a recovery if I need it, if the case may be. I don't think it's cheaper to buy a winch. It's cheaper to buy a winch, you say? Uh, what are some of the more expensive calls that you've had? Last time I went off-road, it cost the customer $3,700. Yeah, that's cheaper to buy a winch. Uh, what, what about just a simple thing, just like sliding off the highway and getting, you know, like pulled out of the river or something back up onto the road? If, I, if you're in the water and I got to get wet, you're looking at about a grand. About a thousand bucks. If you go on KSL, you'll be able to get a winch for about two toes. Thank you. It was a really cheap, like you just slid off of the snowbank toes. Just I got to put my bed down, hook your truck, I hit the wrench, and pull you back two feet onto the pavement. Uh huh. That'll run you about two fifty. Two hundred fifty bucks. Yeah. Cool. Well, awesome. I guess I have. Remember, it's the dead of winter, and it's icy out, and I'm taking a chance on wrecking my truck. Gotcha. And people in Utah don't drive very well. <laughs> Amen to that. <laughs> Well, awesome. It's been a good conversation. I appreciate that. I've got a Ram 2500 with a diesel engine in it. How big of a yeah. winch would I need to have on that, would you recommend? 12.5. Anything more than that, and you're just carrying so much weight, you're going to make your front end sink anyways. Well, cool. Anyways. Appreciate the advice. Yep. Yeah, have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, there you have it. It's cheaper to buy a winch, even if it costs you a bunch of fuel uh, to haul it. I mean, you think about it if you got somebody sitting in the passenger seat. I don't know what the all up weight is on this. I should have weighed it, but I didn't. I would guess that this weighs somewhere between 100 and 200 pounds. So I looked up all the weights online and it's 127 pounds. That's as much as somebody like this. So it's like having another passenger in the car. Whatever. Open Road reached out to me and said, Hey, do you got any projects that we can supply a winch for? And I said, Yes, I do. This one. So this truck I've had since 2014, I bought it new. Since I got rid of my last truck that had a winch, is I wanted to put a winch on it. And so when they reached out and offered a winch, I'm like, sweet. For one, this is commitment, I'm gonna get it done. And two, that takes that much more uh, stress off of me for having to shop for something, figure it out, etc. So what I went with is this tray style winch mount. Uh, search and rescue sergeant, he got a new truck. He got a sexy new, Ram 2500 and they put a winch set up on it at the road shops and I was looking at it I'm like you know like I've had a stigma about these things sticking out too far uh, what if you hit a pedestrian uh, just all kinds of stuff like that and I just got thinking get over it <laughs> let's say if county who's risk adverse is willing to go that route why not me and then when I got thinking about it I'm like dude that's not that bad and it's kind of helpful I was going to do a winch bumper like I did on the last one. I was going to build my own. But when it comes to doing things under the hood, I mean, this is pretty handy. So this base one, I've got a link in the description if you're interested in that. And if you're interested in doing an open road winch like this, uh, I've got a link in the description for them as well. It's uh, openroadfourwheeldrive.com. Or you can also get one on Amazon. That's kind of a no-brainer pre-programmed decision. I know a lot of people like that. So first of all, how hard is it to install the carrier? This you can pull off. It's four bolts on each side and you can pull the whole thing off and then just two cables and you can unstring it. Um, I'm going to weld the nuts on the back side so I can just zip the bolts to the front. But overall, this thing's been pretty handy. You know, as far as strength, how strong is this winch? I actually hooked this up to my telehandler and I drug this truck for about three or four feet uphill in gravel and it did fine. Oh, I was just dragging it up the hill. Way to go, open road. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. 
That's a good load test. Look at that. It don't care. It's grunting, but it's getting it. I winched it across flat. You know, if you're to be able to pull a disabled vehicle off the road or something like that, it would work. It don't care. Uh, the gravel thing was to simulate pulling something that stuck off the median or off of the shoulder or something like that on the highway. And it could totally do it. In dry conditions on gravel, it did it no problem. It didn't seem to work the winch too hard. I took a temperature of the winch motor, which is on this side where all the electronics are, and it was 160 degrees. There you go, 160. That's normal. For an electric motor under heavy load for a longer period of time, that's totally acceptable. Um, the clutch and the gearing, it was just totally cool, didn't bother it at all. Uh, when you cinch it down, it's got a post that you can use to cinch it. So I'm going to give you a tour of the install and show you a little bit about it. I'm going to do a separate video on just the Weston thing. I know attention spans are short, so we'll keep this short. Some of the key highlights I really like about this winch is it comes with the fair lead and it comes with the hook. It comes with a line already on it and it's already tensioned so you don't have to install it yourself or hook it up and drag it. I was going to do that and they did a better job of loading the line than I did. So that saves you a lot of time, makes it a lot easier to install this particular winch. This is a 13,000 pound, it's the Panther, it's the black one, and then it's got this handle on it. I think this is uh, some type of polymer. As far as having this stick up so far, there's another version uh, that has a little wing that goes out to the side for low clearance installation stuff. I would do one of those if you're going to put it down in here. Uh, just because that way you don't have to reach up inside and push it up and whatnot. For this kind of setup, this is ideal. That's another reason why I went with this kind of setup. This box goes on top, and then it's got this wire sticking out here, and this wire goes to the bottom. There's a stud that you can see. You want to do that one and the cable that goes to your negative battery terminal. You want to do those first before you install it. These other three can be installed anytime. If you wanted to, you could mount this on the side here, but that would leave this more flat over the top, which would be good if you did a flip up lid this way so the wind keeps it down. This is really easy because you've got a yellow, a red, and a black grommet at the base of these, so you can't screw this up. Even if you're colorblind and you couldn't tell between brown and red, you could still get this because you've got the yellow and the black. By elimination, you'd get that. It's got a low footprint, which is great for a lot of applications. Again, you got to do this before you mount it down. Uh, it's got four bolts that it comes with. It's really easy to mount down. It's your standard pattern. It'll fit most anything. One of the things that I did to make a better installation as far as liability and crash awareness or whatever is I routed the winch uh, positive cable up the grill and then with one zip tie I pulled it away from the condenser for the air conditioning so nothing's rubbing and then it comes across this softer material uh, that's plastic and then up over the top. I had the positive cable stacked over the top and then back down underneath around the air intake so that it can't rub on anything and then I did two 50 amp circuit breakers and they're just thermatically controlled there's a bimetal plate and it just goes off if it gets too hot as it cools it comes back in contact this is what it looks like as it's doing that so it's hot, it's cooling, it's cooling, it's in contact it pops right back open so stinking fun <laughs> Whoever came up with bimetal springs for circuit protection, that's awesome. You can see that the manufacturer of this is not very high quality. They're not clacking down right in the right place. Man, that's staying closed a long time. What's going on? It's probably draining this. It's actually taking a lot of work. I'm going to turn that off. Yeah, this thing's like about drained. This is what it looks like on a thermal camera. Kind of fun. They're just doing their job. If they weren't there, it would get progressively hot and it would exceed, uh, you know, like 140, 150, 160 degrees is good operating temperature in electronics. That'll work. They can withstand that, no problem. 
pretty much indefinitely. If you don't have that in place, it'll get to where things will get to their melting point, whatever the metal's melting point is. The nice thing about that is you don't have to open your hood to reset it. If you're in a compromising uh, situation, there's trees over your hood or you know your center you're you're in a sketchy situation you're trying to pull out and if you raise the hood that might be the straw that breaks the camel's back whatever when i'm in when i'm winching the last thing i want to do is have to open my hood and uh you know or maybe it's on an uphill and you can't even reach it to close it so that's why i like doing these thermal ones they automatically reset and uh, they protect it so basically if you had a uh, short to ground because it got an impact you got a welder loose underneath of there that's a bad thing that's the way to go i'm gonna have another video coming out on how to make those it's really easy and cheap doesn't cost very much at all so to summarize this thing is very strong it is very versatile in ways that you can mount it the remotes are really easy just hold down the button and then they're ready to go if you want to pay out line you just switch that and the synthetic line everything about it is just really easy when you're wetted you winch back in you just slap that and then push the in button so you can store it like that but you do get more security on this this blocks it so somebody doesn't steal your strap off and be like ooh that's like supreme that's name brand this is not a very fast winch compared to some of the ones that I've used, but it is, it is the tortoise. It is slow, it is steady. Uh, it's got a lot of gearbox to it and it gets the job done. So are people gonna be waiting on you if you're climbing up Pritchett Canyon? Yeah, especially if you're in something this heavy. This is what we're gonna go down. This is Pritchett Canyon. You'll see that it does uh, go out pretty fast. This times out after two minutes. It'll automatically shut off and save your battery. Like I say, it comes with two of these and it comes with one manual remote, which is pretty generous at this price point. Most people don't use the manual controller. If you need it, that means you're having a bad day. I put a little paint just to make it so you don't have to think about the clocking. This looks the same all the way around and it's hard to press on so it's not like you just rotate it and it just falls in. This fit is a little tight. That's one thing I don't like about this setup but when you need it, you need it and it works. The worst part about this, getting it off again. I'm sure that'll wear in, but this just wasn't made very well, and it's because nobody wants to use it. You can't see this at all in the sunshine. See, here's out. I haven't checked to see how many feet per minute this is, but it does go faster when it's not under load. When it is under load, it does get pretty slow. It crawls pretty slow when it's real heavy. It is an incredibly good value. I cannot speak to longevity because I haven't had it very long. Can I speak to the IP rating on it? As far as to look at it, it seems like it's built pretty well and sealed up pretty well. This is the easiest winch install I have ever done, especially with it being synthetic rope, already wound around it, already under tension. Like, dude, that saves a ton of time. This installs with two screws, just one right here and one right here. It's so easy. <laughs> These are easy. That's easy if you know to do it first. And then the cable, I was worried that I wasn't gonna have enough cable and it was perfect. Another thing I like about this setup is when you pull this and you listen to the gears, it sounds great. This has been used under load. Let's give it a listen. <laughs> it just sounds so clean. So this winch line, I've wound it in and made a mess of it. I pinched it in a couple of places. You see you've got a little bit of kink there. I mean, that was flat as a pancake and it just pulled out just fine. There's some irony here. It's iron flat. <laughs> it's skin. No, the irony is that when you pull under load, but not like ridiculous, stupid load like I did, it makes your cave, your uh, winch line load on nice. And that way you don't have stuff like this happen. It loads good. You look at line like that and you think that it's ruined. But all you have to do is push it together like this and work it a little bit. 
and it comes right back out. It's almost like it's just a wax or something, but when it's just uh, onto itself, it's not too bad to just straighten it out. I like everything about it. There's, I really don't have a lot to complain about. The remotes that come with it are just the standard remotes that you see with all of them. They're not necessarily proprietary. They're not that bad. You push a button for a second and it comes on. The LED comes on red. You can see it indoors in the bright sunlight. You can't see it at all. Come on. But you can just trust that it's on. If you hit the button and it works, it's on. If you hit the button and it doesn't work, just hit the button again. When you suck the winch line in, you don't want to collapse your fair lead. But at the same time, I like to have mine tight enough that people can't take my hook or take this off and uh, get it out. So if you can turn this still, it's not tight enough. Just give it a little bump. Anyway, if it's in snug, you can't pull up on that. You can't get this to come out and it'll protect your line from being stolen. Is somebody going to steal your synthetic line? Yeah, I've seen it happen before, so I wouldn't risk it. Bonus footage at the end.